Black Lives Matter protesters um, uh, want to march again, uh, and, and this is not um, an opinions uh, YouTube clip. You know, I don't. I'm not going to say what I think about that. Um, but uh, the Black Lives Matter protest organisers have said that they will be encouraging protesters to uh, follow all the health rules. Yeah, you know, because we've got two competing justices going on at the moment, at the one time, which is always, they're, all, they're, they're always the most interesting moments when you've got, you know, like someone wants to smoke, my right to smoke, you know, and another person says, I've got a right not to breathe the smoke, uh, you know, two competing justices, you know. So Black Lives Matter's you know, pretty clearly like that because, you know, justice can't wait. Um, and, 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 and of course, justice can never wait, but it, it's forced to actually um, in, in, in reality. But, you know, what they mean by justice can't wait is justice shouldn't have to wait, you know. Let's march now for Black Lives Matter, even though, you know, people with underlying health issues and people who are elderly and everything might say, what about justice for us? You know, so you've got, you know, the, you've got the situation, smoke, 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 don't want to breathe it, you know. Um, so you've got, you know, yeah, all right, that's a very valid thing. You know, we need justice uh, for Black Lives Matter. We need justice for elderly people, um, you know, as well in the age of coronavirus. So you've got these two competing things, you know. You don't have to shout, you know. Well, Charlie doesn't have to anyway. Not any shed he doesn't. Uh, so um, now... Uh, so the black lives matter. So how would you deal with that? Uh, well, with smoking, what do you do? You you say, all right, you're not allowed. You can smoke, but not where someone else can breathe your smoke. All right, that's pretty easy. It's not that hard, you know. For example, at on train station platforms, you can't smoke, but if you walk down the street a little bit, you can smoke. All right, so that's all right. Yeah. That one's been dealt with pretty well. Two competing justices. Um, and, uh, but what about the Black Lives Matter one? I have to think about that for a minute. Now, there was a Black Lives Matter, there was an Indigenous guy the other day, and uh, he had some cousin or brother or something who, had, who was a Black Death in custody, and he said, at the end of the day, this is Indigenous land. And... You know, you can't stop me marching. I'm an indigenous bloke. You've got no jurisdiction over me. Um, and, you know, and I thought, all right, so that's, you know, that's a there, there's some justice in that comment. Um, but the, at the, there's, there's more than one thing that happens at the end of the day. You don't go to bed with just one thing on your mind. You know, at the end of the day, a couple of things are... Uh, are playing around in your in your head at the same time. You know, at the end of the day is midnight, you know. And at midnight, when you're lying in bed, you're sort of saying, he's got a point. You know, at the end of the day, this is Aboriginal land. You know, but then in your head, if, you, if, you, if, if you're willing to sort of um, think in shades of grey, uh, yes, this is, at the end of the day, at midnight, each night, it is indigenous land, arguably, um, and at the end of the day, also, see, it's not ex it's not the only thing in play. Also, at the end of the day, these are human lives all around us, twenty seven million people or something. And even if they are trespassing, let's say they were trespassing, right? Um, even if they are trespassing, you know. Uh, on indigenous land, they're still human lives, you see. So at the end of the day, this is indigenous land. Um, but at the end of the day, also, these are human lives. So I think we've got the smoking, don't want to um, smell your smoke situation still. So even people say at the end, when people say at the end of the day, um, I think the that phrase is designed to say that's the end of the discussion. But I, I think they um, fail sometimes to allow for the fact that at the end of the day, there's more than one thing going on in your head at midnight. So we're still, we're still stuck, aren't we? 
We've still got competing justices. Um, so, yeah, you know, justice can't wait. Black Lives Matter justice can't wait. But, um, um, but you're stuck, aren't you? Because you don't believe in justice. You believe in Black Lives Matter justice, but not the other justices, because there's other justices. Um, so you don't believe in the right for X number of people to stay alive. Um, in um, if you know if they should be um, uh, killed as a result of you marching tomorrow, all right? And there may only be two people that die as a result of that march. If you have a march tomorrow in Sydney, maybe one person in all of Australia will die. Yeah, then you get that philosophical problem. How many? Um, is that all right? You know, if by marching you save three other lives. That one is always hard. But you see, you've still got the smoking and the I don't want to breathe your smoke stuff, you know. You've still got that problem no matter what, even if you want to weigh up one versus three. Uh, uh, so have I got anything else to say about that? Uh, Black Lives Matter, um, justice, and I'm an old person, or I've got cancer, and my justice too. Um, I'm sure there's something else to be had in that. Um... Oh, yes. Uh, so, the black, I almost said this at the start. This is the thought I was carrying into this episode when I got started. The Black Lives Matter protesters have said, we are, you know, we are trying to do both justices. Um, so, we want to march, but we will also encourage people who are protesting to, do, to follow all health regulations. Okay, so you know they're they're going for, but you know the organisers there have, are going for both justices. But I don't think um I think if it, you know they um I think what the government is saying we don't trust that's not enough. You know, um, if forty thousand people march and everybody is also going to. Yeah, you know, we want a guarantee that they they will all wear their masks. You know, and it's not good enough to say we're going to encourage. You know, and a rally organizer to say we're going to encourage everyone to wear masks and socially distance to the tune of one point five meters. Uh, that'd be a, you know a very spaced out rally. It would probably take up the equivalent um, land mass. It'd be a rally that would be really spread out. You know. It'll probably be the size of seven suburbs, for all I know. I haven't done the maths, but you know what I mean. Um, so, you know, you wouldn't want to protest. You know, it wouldn't be a protest that you could video or um, take a photo of where you could see a lot of people as a mob, you know. And um, I think the rally organisers, I suppose, if you were into justice. Now, this is the thing. Are you into justice? And if you were into justice, and I mean not just one justice, not just the smoking justice, but also the I don't want to breathe the smoke justice. If you're into both justices, um, what steps have you taken not to make sure, as a rally organiser, that everybody in your protest will follow all the health guidelines? Yeah, and I think that's the challenge for a rally organiser. You know, and I'm saying we are encouraging people um, to do all the right things. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a nothing statement. That's not a nothing statement. That's um, because you just know, you know you obviously know that they're not going to, and you know people aren't going to do anything if you're going to just encourage them. You've got to do more than that. You've got to put the little X's on the street or something, um, you know, and tell people only to march on the X's and all that sort of stuff. You know, don't go on to the next X in, in, until the next person has gone on to the following X. And all. It sounds bizarre, but if you if you went to that extreme, you'd get a lot of respect. I know it sounds that sounded nuts, but some of the um, Black Lives Matters protesters in Berlin, Berlin did that. Not that, but what they did, they cut up ribbons, thousands of them, ribbons um, of one point five meter or one meter distance. You know, and all the all the protesters made sure that they held one end of the ribbon each. 
and uh, they made a human chain through Berlin. This was early. This was a couple of months ago, a month ago, maybe two months ago. And um, I thought that was I was actually all for that. I said, "Good on you, Black Lives Matter protesters." I was fully in support of it. You see, um, because the Germans they know how to engineer a solution, and that's not discriminatory. They really did. It was that? You know, I'm Irish. Were we were we ever going to get a Mercedes Benz going? No. You know, um, so Germans, you know, I like them. Um, so I, I think um, our Black Lives Matter protesters uh, are um, the rally organisers are uh, should be um, should be doing more. It's not enough to say we encourage. We know humans. You know, we had this in my suburb here in Essendon. The um, the government said. Uh, Masks will be mandatory at midnight on Wednesday, and that was last week, you know. Now, during Wednesday, hardly anyone down the street was wearing a mask. Yeah, because it, the, law, the rule wasn't cutting in till midnight. Now, we're a very law-abiding lot. You know, we're a very, um, you know, extremely middle class around here. <laughs> you know, we know how to follow the law. On Thursday... Everybody was wearing them, you know, like, I said, hang on, <laughs> oops, got a thing there, um, everyone was wearing them on Thursday and none of us, that's how law-abiding we are in Essendon, but we're stupid, <laughs> you know, that didn't make any sense, you know, like, in terms of the health outcomes you're looking for, and the Black Lives Matter protest organisers, um, you know, are not switched on, you know, or they don't care. They really don't care about justice. They say we care about justice and that's why we're doing it, but they don't care about justice because they know that if they've got any brains, the humans are like that. You know, just encouraging we people in Essendon to wear our masks. We weren't going to until it was made a law, you know, with a two hundred dollar fine attached to it. And um and and so the natural and I hope anybody who marches in Essendon today gets a two hundred dollar fine. Not marches, um, you know, walks down the street to get some bread or something, and they're not wearing a mask, two hundred dollar fine. And you know, I do think, even though I'm clearly in favour of Black Lives Matter protests, because I, I I've come out fully in favour of the way it was done in Berlin. You know, so I'm not anti Black Lives Matter protests. I'm just saying that um, you know. The both justices have to be looked after, and if you're going to have a Black Lives Matter protest in Melbourne don't, or Sydney, don't you know that's not enough to say we encourage people to do the opposite of what we absolutely know what they're going to do, and we absolutely know they're going to do the opposite. But yeah, you know, because we encourage them to do to not do that, uh, we're okay. <laughs> you're not okay. Um, so yeah, I don't think that's enough. So. Uh, in the whole context of the whole thing, I'd, I'd get a lot of cops out there and just booked a lot of them. You know, I, I think I would, but not because I'm anti Black Lives Matter protest, because I'm anti stupid. You know, um, and anti don't care. You know, because all those people don't care. You know, if if they're not going to do the social distancing, they don't care about justice. And I think that's a fair comment. Yeah, you know, I think this has been a balanced episode. I don't know. You know.